I thought I'd make a quick video that looks at how to deal with a question that asks you to write about the evidence that led up to the updated model for benzene. So it's quite a common exam question on organic papers and it's often worth five or six marks. So we've got this question here. Since Kekulé proposed a structure for benzene in 1865, experimental evidence has led to the proposal of an updated model. So you've got the Kekulé model on the left with its alternating double and single carbon-carbon bonds. And then on the right hand side, we've got the updated model. So we've got to do two things. We've got to explain the experimental evidence that led up to the development of that updated model. And also we've got to describe the bonding in the updated model for benzene. So if you want to have a go at this, pause the video and then play on when you're ready. Otherwise, just continue watching and I'll start going through the answers. So we'll start with the evidence. I've got four pieces of evidence here, so hopefully you've come up with the same as me. Don't worry if yours are in a different order. So the first thing, benzene undergoes substitution reactions and not addition reactions, as you'd expect from Kekulé's structure with those carbon-carbon double bonds in there. Next thing I'm saying, when benzene reacts, it needs a catalyst. And then I'm given an example. So when it reacts with halogens, it requires a halogen carrier catalyst because that benzene ring is unable to polarise halogen molecules. Next one, Kekulé's structure would suggest alternating bond lengths because carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-carbon um, -carbon double bonds have got different lengths. So single are slightly longer than double. However, X-ray diffraction has shown that all of those carbon-carbon bond lengths in benzene are the same length. And I'm specifying they are intermediate in length between carbon-carbon single and carbon-carbon double. And you can see there in brackets, it's a really handy phrase at this point in an answer like this. You're saying that it's got a regular hexagonal shape. So that regular there that's underlined in bold is saying that all the bonds are the same length. And then the final thing I'm saying is Kekulé's structure would suggest the enthalpy change of hydrogenation, not hydration, which I see a lot, would be three times more exothermic than that for cyclohexene with its one carbon-carbon double bond. However, it's been found to be less exothermic than that. So now the description of the bonding in the updated model and what I tell my students all the time is draw some diagrams. Give yourself something to talk about and label them. So the first diagram I would be drawing is that one there. So what we're showing is the carbon-carbon bonds and each carbon in the hexagon has got the p orbital with an electron in there. And then what happens? The p orbitals start to overlap forming pi bonds. So these orbitals expand and start to overlap with each other. So that's what these lines are representing here. Remember that happens above the ring and below the ring. And the upshot of that is we end up with um, the electrons becoming delocalized and that leads to the pi electron cloud, which is above and below the ring. Now, if you notice back at the start of the question, it, there was no mention of the word delocalized. It said the updated model. And that's because delocalization is obviously a key part of this answer. 